Hello, I'm John Paul and welcome to All Things Marvelous. So, I've been working with Blender for a while now and I think it's great, but every now and then I come across something like this and I think, ooh, that looks amazing. And then a couple of clicks later, I find out it's done in either Houdini or Cinema 4D, both of which cost money. And I always think I wish I could do it in Blender. So I try and like most of us, probably fail miserably after a couple of hours of baking with no success. Working individually on one thing at a time, where it's a flag or a pillow, seems to work great. But when you want to add three, four, maybe five things and have them all working in a simulation, it starts to get a bit tricky. I've tried to use Houdini and to be honest, it's a bit of a steep learning curve and I don't have Cinema 4D. So I thought, let's try and do this in Blender once and for all. Ultimately, this is just going to take a bit of trial and error. But luckily for you, I've done all of that. So hopefully there's an easy to follow workflow that will get you up and running with some good cloth simulations like this. Now I will say that this will probably mean that baking will take a long time. But if we set it up correctly and you follow the steps as I go, the tricks and techniques I use should help you shorten the time it takes to get a good looking cloth pillow squishy simulation. And if we're lucky, minimize it going horribly wrong. Okay, so cool, let's get into it. First, let's create a UV sphere because we need the line that goes around the circumference. We need to delete the top and bottom vertices, which create a gap, and then select all of the top vertices and press S, Z, and zero, which will flatten all of the vertices together. Do the same with the bottom S, Z, and zero, then select grid fill to fill in the gap. In the grid fill settings, use the offset to align the edges to the shape and select simple blending. Do this for the bottom gap as well. Okay. Go into edit mode and select the top and bottom edge loops and then in the vertex groups type in pin and click assign. Now add a subdivision surface and leave both at one for the viewport and one for the render. Next add a cloth simulation and turn the quality up to 10 and take the gravity all the way down. Turn the collisions quality up to 10 and make the shrinking factor about 0.1. Put the pressure to one, and I selected silk as a preset, and then this happens. You need to select the pin group in the menu, and then from here, it's just a case of playing with it until you get the shape that you want. What I did is I moved the pin group down a little bit and changed the shrinking factor to about 0.2. Actually, no, about 0.4. Next, add another subdivision surface with just one in the viewport and one in the render after it. That should smooth out the wrinkles a little bit, but you wanna try and get as many wrinkles as possible without breaking the mesh. So now onto the next shape. For this, we're gonna need a round cube. To add this, go to the settings and then add-ons and type in mesh and click on extra mesh objects. From here, you'll see in the drop-down from the mesh objects, a thing called round cube. In the round cube settings, take it to one and bring up the iterations to 10. This will give us a sphere we can now use with a different sewing technique. In edit mode, select the bottom vertices and drag down. Click Ctrl and R to add some loop cuts and smooth out the geometry. Select the bottom half and turn on proportional editing. Press S and use the middle mouse wheel to adjust the scale. From here, let's select all of these loop edges to join up, which should give us a nice clean selection for the sewing pin group. Again, in the vertex group, type in pin and click assign. You can check this selection by clicking the select and deselect buttons. Add a cloth simulation again and remember to turn off gravity and make the shrink 0.3-ish. 
Again, put in a subdivision surface at the top and bottom of the cloth sim. From here, I just played around with the shape, moving the top and bottom vertices and scaling things to get the right shape. Once I got something roughly I liked, I moved on to the next. I added a cube and then extruded it into a hollow cube formation. I joined all of the vertices by distance and then deleted the unnecessary faces. I added a subdivision and gave this about two on both. Then in edit mode, press Alt S and you'll be able to adjust the width of the cube. I quickly adjusted the origin and lined it up with the other ones to give myself some idea of scale. Apply the subdivision surface, then go to select the pin group around the geometry. Then add another subdivision surface and a cloth simulation. Then this happens. Each time with each shape, you're going to have to play around a little bit to get the exact sort of look you want. It all depends on scale, pressure and the shrinking factor. Next, with another cube, make a cross formation and add a subdivision surface and then apply it. Select the pin group, add a cloth simulation and add a subdivision surface at the start and end both on a setting of one. Just go through with that recording day tonight. Just as good as you possibly can. Now do that for me. Lastly, I copied the first item and in edit mode I made it have a larger base. I changed the pinpoint so that I got a different result in the cloth simulation. Again, playing around with the pressure and the shrinking factor. Okay, once we have some rough shapes, the next thing we need to do is remove the last subdivision surface on each of the items. Then bump the first subdivision surface to 3 and apply it on all of the shapes on keyframe 1. Go back into edit mode and double check where the pin is and make sure that the pin is still in the right place for the pressure and sewing. Here are all the objects and all the pins. Each object has a slightly different variation on shrinking factor and pressure. Do whatever you think looks best with a quality of about 15. Make sure that the collision qualities are 10 and then make sure self collision is turned on. Then click bake all dynamics. Great, now you should have something that looks like this. From here we need to select them all and right click convert to mesh. Then this is when we need to make them big. Currently they're about 10 meters square. We need to make them at least 50 meters by 50 meters. You could probably go a little bit bigger, but this is what I found to be the sweet spot. Then select them all again and click Control A and apply the scale. Check in edit mode that the pin selection has stayed in the same place. Okay, from here we need to make a pressure vertex group. With the pin group selected, hold down Control and press the plus button. This will enlarge the selection. Then create a new vertex group called Pressure and reduce the weight to zero and click Assign. Then click Select Invert and move the weight to one and click Assign again. In the cloth simulation, make sure you select the Pressure Vertex group in the Pressure section. Next, we need to reduce the face count. To do this, add a decimate above the cloth simulation and choose between unsubdivide, planar, or collapse. I mainly went with collapse and with the ratio of about 0.3, but an unsubdivide sometimes works better. Ultimately, you're trying to get the face count down to about two thirds. Once you have something that looks good and doesn't take away too much from the folded geometry, Click apply on the shape and repeat this with all of the other shapes. Okay, so here's the final setup for the animation. Make sure that the view distance is on 10,000 and that your dimensions are roughly 50 meters by 50 meters for every shape and that all the scale is applied. Each shape should have collisions turned on in the physics panel as well. 
I put two forces in the middle of minus 20 and then a force either side with minus 200 in individually named force collections. The most important detail here is under object collisions. The distance needs to be anything above 0.3 meters. Also, make sure the gravity is turned off. I assigned each object its own force collection based on the opposite sides to each other and made sure self collisions were turned on with the default settings. Shrinking factor and pressure does vary shape to shape, but nothing more than about one for normal objects and for the cubes I want them to be more rigid so they have a pressure of 8. With tension, compression, shear and bending, each one is very high with about anything from 3 to 4000 compression and 400 tension and between 100 and 400 on the shear and bending. I made the speed multiplier 0.25 to give it that slow motion look and both quality step settings were at about 10. Then sit back and let it bake. Mine took around two to three hours to bake. If it does break somewhere in the baking, try to assess what object first causes it and move its starting position slightly. And maybe turn up the collision distance to 0.4 or quality steps to 15. So there we go. I hope you found the video interesting and you get to make some of your own squashy cloth animations. I'd love to see what you make and if you want to put some links in the comments that would be great. I'll put a link to the blend file in the description along with a gumroad link to some of the fabric patterns I created for the project. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video.